Buongiorno everybody, buongiorno. This is Jackie Henry and welcome to Confessions of a Late Bloomer. So today I want to ask you, who's Anna Robinson? Does anybody know? You're going to be surprised. I bet you know by the end of this video. So Anna, let me tell you a little history about this girl. She's pretty amazing. She was born in Greenwich, New York on September 7th, 1860. She was the third of 10 children born to Marguerite Robinson and Russell Robinson. She was raised with four sisters, five brothers. Her father ran a flax mill and was a farmer. And as a child, Anna had it pretty rough. She, you know, only went to school for a very short period in a one-room schoolhouse. That schoolhouse now is the, in the Bentington Museum of Vermont. That exact schoolhouse is housing the largest collections of her work. Her story shows us it's never too late to find your bliss, not ever. So let me tell you about Anna. She was inspired to paint by taking art lessons at that school. She first painted as a child using lemon and grape juice to make colors for her landscapes. Well, at 12 years of age, she had to leave home and begin working. She began working for a wealthy neighboring family, performing chores on their farm, like cooking and cleaning and all that stuff I really hate, and sewing. And she did that for 15 years, and I'm sure that was hard work back in those days. Well, one of those families, the White Sides, noticed her interest in prints that they had up on the wall, and so they purchased some chalk and wax crayons so she could create her own artwork. Pretty cool, huh? Well, when she was 27, she worked on a farm with a guy by the name of Thomas Salomon Moses. He was a hired high-end guy, and they ended up getting married and establishing themselves in Virginia, where they spent nearly two decades living and working on five separate local farms. Well, to supplement the family income, Anna had to do some stuff. So she made potato chips and churned butter from the milk of a cow. Wow. They ended up purchasing a farm with her savings. That's pretty neat. Later, um, she purchased that farm and she had 10 children to work that farm, five of which survived infancy. Although she loved living in San, um, Shenandoah, I think it was, the Shenandoah Valley. I think there was a TV show about that. In 1905, her and Robert moved to a farm in Eagle Bridge, New York, at her husband's urging, of course. When Thomas Moses was about 67 years of age, 1927, he died of a heart attack, after which Anna's son, Forrest, helped her operate the farm. Anna Moses never married again. She retired and moved to her daughter's home in 1936. Anna was also known as Mother Moses, Grandma Moses, although her first exhibition was Mrs. Moses. Not, not as catchy. The press dubbed her Grandma Moses and the nickname stuck. As a young wife, Moses, she created her, it was very creative in her own home. For example, in 1918, she set up, a, she used house paint, which I'm sure would not be very safe in this day and age, to decorate a fireboard. And beginning in 1932, she made embroidered pictures of yarn for family and friends. She also uh, created some beautiful quilts and objects of what they call hobby art. But by the age of 76, she developed arthritis, which made embroidering very painful. Her sister suggested that she start painting and it would be that that might be easier on her. And this idea spurred her on to her painting career in her late 70s when her and you know what she loved it so much that when her right hand stopped start hurting from arthritis, she switched to her left hand. I mean, now that's talent. She was a prolific painter who generated over 1,500 canvases in three decades. Now, initially, her artwork only sold for 3 to $5. It was the time. I don't know what that would be in today's coin, but that's not much. Uh, but it ended up increasing to eight to $10,000. That's pretty amazing. Even in today's market, $10,000 is nothing to sneeze at. Ima imagine back in, you know, in the 1940s, that's a lot of money. Unfortunately, she died, Grandma Moses died at the age of 101 on December 13th, 1961 in Hoosick Falls, New York. She's buried there in the Maple Grove Cemetery and 
President John F. Kennedy actually memorialized her as an American treasure. So this is a really good one to tell you that it's never too late. Look what she overcame. Look what she had to do. She worked hard. That, those are hard times when people washed in clothes. We're so spoiled now, we couldn't even survive that time, let alone no electricity. So imagine what she went through. That's pretty amazing. So I'm here to tell you, never give up. As my sign says right back here, never give up. You could follow your bliss. Let me know how it's going. Let me know what you're having problems with. Let's move on to our next chapter of life and find what makes you happy. All right, thanks for checking in next week on Confessions of a Late Bloomer. Thank you so much.